Tony Khan bashed WWE NXT a few weeks ago for bringing out the older stars to pop a rating. And what did TK do? He brought out the oldest man of them all, the nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your AEW Dynamite review for the 25th of October. 2023 and we have Ric Flair in all elite wrestling. What is this going to lead to? Is this a one-off appearance? Are we going to get multiple Ric Flair appearances? Are we going to get Ric Flair on AEW alongside Sting every week until Sting retires? And God forbid, are we going to get a Ric Flair match? Who knows? It's AEW. I guess anything could happen. But tonight, we were in Philadelphia, and of course, the home of ECW. And we also got Rob Van Dam, which is a pretty cool little thing tonight. And again, I mean, this is just to everything Tony Khan said was coming back to bite him on the ass about Cena and The Undertaker. So it's, it's, it's not right. McMahon's a cheat. McMahon's a bad guy. WWE are horrible. WWE... Uh, deserve the death penalty for bringing back Taker and Cena, but this guy can bring back Ric Flair, this guy can bring back RVD, he can still use Sting who's like, what, 64, 65 um, he can bring in Edge he can use Christian like, where when does the hypocrisy end? like, Tony Khan, like, you're <laughs> that, that whole meltdown over the ratings is fucking insane, but, like, he's not talked about ratings in a couple of days, so let's, uh, let's move on but hopefully NXT beat AEW this week. I don't think they will, but here, here's hoping that they do, because I'd like to see Tony Khan lose it again, and Chris Jericho too. Chris Jericho, the only, well, not the only member, but the official member of the Tony Khan Kiss My Ass Club. Look, we started off match one, the Diamond, uh, Dynamite Diamond Ring Finals, MJF versus Juice Robinson. I don't quite get what this match was, I don't understand what was on the line. I thought, MGF was going to defend the belt. Turns out he wasn't defending the belt. Is the diamond ring like a number one content? I don't know what I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. It's the diamond ring finals. What the fuck's the diamond ring? Surely this isn't another title that they've got. Anyway, winner of the diamond ring match, MGF. It is what it is. The gun club on it ringside. I, I just think MGF needs to do better than this. I, I don't think this feud's really helping him. But yeah, MGF wins after the match. Uh, we had, or wait, was that? I think it was after the following match. So yeah, MGF wins. He celebrates, whatnot. Uh, we then have no wait. It is Kenny Omega? Kenny Omega definitely came out. Was that? I think it was this. Yeah. So we did the whole scissor me thing, and then Kenny Omega came out, and the crowd are chanting, "Holy shit!" I mean, honestly. They're chanting holy shit because Kenny Omega walked out. Are you for fucking real? It just shows you how delusional this AEW fan base is. They, they think that Kenny Omega simply walking out onto the ramp is like a holy shit moment. What the fuck does A what do AEW fans know about wrestling? I mean, Kenny Omega could walk into my living room right now and I wouldn't say holy shit. I'd probably say, what are you doing, you bum? Get out my house or I'll clean you up. That's what I'd probably say to the cleaner. But I wouldn't be going holy shit, no. Definitely fucking not. Anyway, Kenny Omega challenges him to a match. MGF accepts we're going to get the match at AEW Collision. He had a little bit of, if you're the scumbag that these fans want you to be, you'll accept the match and whatnot. And MGF did accept the match. So, MGF versus Kenny Omega for the title at AEW Collision. I'm assuming they're trying to get a good rating. I'm assuming that they know the collision ratings are poor. And they've got competition on Saturday, so that they're trying to put on a big title match in order to try and you know, combat college football. Will it work for them? Who knows? Up next, got RVD and Hook versus the Dark Order. I hate the Dark Order. I cannot take uh, John Silver seriously. This guy's just too small. He, le he legit looks. I'm not. I'm not being mean. I'm not being an arsehole. He legit looks deformed. He looks way, way, way too small. He literally looks like a dwarf. He does look like a midget. Even when he's getting in the ring and he's coming through the middle rope, he can't even get through the middle rope. He has to like lunge himself. He he springboards himself off the bottom rope because it's almost like his legs won't stretch. His legs won't reach from the middle rope to the to the canvas. Man, what the fuck is this shit? Well, I just don't. Think I can't take the guy seriously. He is about four foot two. I know they had a woman. They had a woman, Layla Hirsch, 
on Dynamite, and I think, I, I believe she might have been released just because she's Russian, which absolutely sucks if that is the case. But yeah, she was small too, although women are naturally smaller than men, so she being small, even though she did look a bit like a dwarf too, it didn't really affect her much. But when you've got John Silver wrestling, like, you know, average height guys, like 5 foot 11 guys, he, he man, he, he, he looks tiny, he, he does look like Hornswoggle. In this ring. I can't take him serious. Um, Hook forces Silver to tap with the red rum. Why the fuck would you bring RVD back and have Hook pick up the win? Fuck Hook. Honestly, Hook sucks. RVD's the man. Give RVD one last run. Crowd were chanting, you've still got it. Again, RVD, another guy that Tony Khan's brought in. And what is AEW? Is AEW the new TNA? The new retirement home? I mean, look at the age of half of these guys. You've got Christian, Sting, RVD, I mean, Edge, Adam Copeland, who wasn't here tonight. Then you've got Ric Flair, who's like 10 hundred years old. I mean, the, the combined age of half of these guys, man, is insane. Um, Tony Storm got introduced here, so we're going to get Tony Storm tonight. I think this is probably Tony Storm's best work of her career. This timeless Tony Storm stuff is different. At least it's different. It's something new. So I'll respect her for that. Because otherwise she was just a, a, a woman in tights wrestling. So at least she's trying something different. Um, Sting and Darby Allen came out. Sting says he could not have come this far without Darby. He says he's the best tag team partner he's ever had. Honestly man, I, I can't believe Sting is putting Darby Allen over like this. is fucking sick. Sting giving credit to Darby Allen that this guy is this guy is a bum and Sting's treating him like a fucking legend saying he's the best tag team partner he's ever had saying that he couldn't have got this far without Darby Allen are you shitting me Tony says uh, Tony Schiavone says we're all proud to be part of Sting's career uh, 35 years ago Sting put TBS wrestling on the map Tony Schiavone says he's got a special gift for Sting and here it is Whoa! Ric Flair is here. The Nature Boy gets in the ring. He embraces Sting. And Ric Flair basically says, look, 35 years ago we went 55 minutes. He says that Sting lived up to all the potential that he's seen in him. And he says he wants to be here. He wants to ride out Sting's final run in TNA. And I actually thought it was one of Rick, It was actually pretty good for Ric Flair because he didn't embarrass himself. He didn't take over the entire segment. He actually made it about Sting. I remember last time Ric Flair did the Hall of Fame in WWE and he basically made the thing all about him rather than the guy that he was inducting. So I think at least, uh, at least I think the great Moore, at least Sting done a, a Ric Flair done a good job here, I think, of just being short and sweet, you know, and just basically putting the attention on Sting. Christian came out, chanted... Uh, the, he says that Ric Flair was like a super kick away from dying, uh, made a lot of Ric Flair, it's going to be dead jokes, he says that God isn't real or else Ric Flair would have died 20 years ago, the crowd were chatting, fuck you Christian, Christian says look there's three of us and two of you, I don't care if you want to use Ric Flair as a tag team partner, but how about at full gear, we get a six on six match, I'd love to see Ric Flair back in the ring, go for it nature boy, Woo! hit a couple of chops, he did hit a chop on Sting to be fair, maybe, look, why couldn't why couldn't Ric Flair work a match and just sit on the apron? Honestly, I think he could. Fucking hell. Ric Flair, full gear. Get him on some gear. And he can just get in the ring, deliver a few chops, hit a woo. And then uh, go for the figure four. Maybe we can even get the top rope spot where he gets thrown after that as well. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. I would not be surprised if we see uh, Ric Flair wrestling in AEW. Uh, up next with the Ring of Honor World Six Man Championship uh, trios. I mean, there's just too many fucking belts in this company. None of them mean shit. I mean, they've got all these belts and not one of them was worth anything. It was the Elite defeating the Hardys and Isa Cassidy. Uh, it's sad to see the Hardys just become jobbers. You know what? Fuck it. I know they won't because the money that Tony Khan is paying is insane. And like Matt Hardy is literally stealing a wage of Tony Khan at this point in his career. And he's not going to leave. But it would be cool to see the Hardys return to TNA. It would be cool to see RVD return to TNA. Especially with TNA, you know, bringing back the name. They're at least going for it. They said they're going to tour more. They said they're going to try and go to bigger arenas in 2024. If TNA truly want to make an impact, no pun intended, but if they want to try and consolidate themselves, I guess they are the third best company, like they are the third American company, I'm, I'm not denying that, but right now they're a distant third. If they want to try 
and be more respectable, get higher ratings, get a better network. If they want to try and get close to AEW, whether it be Rampage, Collision or Dynamite, if they want to try and improve TNA, then they need to get in some big stars. They need to get in some big names. There's been talks about CM Punk. That would be the biggest name they could get by far. If TNA could get CM Punk, that would be a game changer 100%. And I believe that TNA with CM Punk could challenge AEW over a period of time. 100% believe that. Totally. Um, it'd be good if they could get the Hardys, RVD back. I mean, why not? Why not get guys back like that? James Storm, Bobby Roode, could we see Beer Money return? If TNA truly want to get back to their glory days, then they need to bring back stars and people that put TNA on the map, not this current roster of bums. But look, enough about TNA. This is a Dynamite review. Uh, the Elite one, it's fucking sad. The Hardys lose again. I mean, what is the point? What is the point? Uh, we then got a video with Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana hanging out at Hangman's house. And I think they destroyed his house a wee bit. And I mean, he says, never, don't forget whose house it is. It's Swerve's house. So, I mean, it wasn't that great. I just, I don't, I don't really rate Swerve Strickland. Some people like him. That's fair enough. Uh, we then got Hikira Shida versus Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho hit her head on the exposed turnbuckle. Hopefully it makes her look a bit prettier, but I don't know. Uh, she's a ring it hits her with a knee. The think it's called the katana. She wins and then timeless Tony Storm comes out and the screen goes black and white and she poses on the top of the ramp. So, I mean, it is what it is. It wasn't great. Uh, Renee's backstage with Samoa Joe. Joe says MGF suffers from a serious lack of friendship on one condition. The condition is Samoa Joe gets his rematch for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. So, I don't quite get what this is here. Um, Joe, is he going to team up with MJF? I have no idea. I'm not quite sure what it I don't know. I don't know, man. It, it sucks. It sucks. Then in the main event, Orange Cassidy and Okada versus the Blackpool Combat Club. I hate the Blackpool Combat Club. I hate Orange Cassidy. And I don't give a shit about some no-name Japanese guy. Honestly. What a terrible main event. Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson, whatever he calls himself these days, he was selling his eye. Don't know whether he's legit hurt or if, if he's fake selling it, but let's be real, nobody sells in AEW, so I'm more, I'm more willing, I'm likely to believe that uh, Daniel Bryan is pro possibly hurt here. He was, sell he was holding his eye, he was selling his eye. Doctors came in after the match and checked on him, and then we got a bunch of nobodies running, and they had like a face-off. I think we'd had we had Hook looking at Cassidy and Okada looking at Cascanoli, and I think uh, Ambrose was in there as well. And I mean, it was just a shit main event that meant absolutely nothing. Did nothing for me, guys. Did he haw for me? And yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Best friends, I think, were in there as well, and, and Yuta, and just a bunch of nobodies. So. Yeah, a terrible way to end the fucking show, man. Terrible way. Why not end it with MGF? Why the... Who decided this match to end the show? Honestly, what a jokey a match to end the show. This was garbage. And that's it, guys. That's your AEW. I enjoyed the Christian, por uh, the Christian promo. I was about to say porno. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I don't want to see Christian do that stuff. I don't care whose mom he's going to be in it with. I don't want to see that. Anyway, I, I enjoyed the Christian promo. And we got to see Ric Flair back which was cool and rvd as well hitting a frog splash i'll give it a two a two out of ten ten was tony storm it's probably the best thing she's ever done so i think a two is fair i'm not gonna get any i'm not gonna give any more than a two i'm not but christian every week continues to be the best thing on AEW. and where the hell was adam copeland tonight big adam copeland edge comes in and it's like one show he's there, the next show he's not there. There's no consistency with AEW. People just show up, people disappear. It, it, it's tough to watch. I don't know what's happening with wrestling. Back in the day, everybody appeared on every show. And if they weren't there, there was a good reason for them not being there. Nowadays, it's just like people randomly show up. And honestly, it's like if, if someone, if a big name's not on the show, it's not even a big deal. They just gloss over it. It's like, ah, well, he didn't show up tonight. He might show up next week. I mean, what the fuck is this shit? Seriously, what is this shit? Two out of ten, guys. That's it. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Just spilt something there. Don't know what it is, but um, yeah, AW fucking sucks. Till next time. Peace.